Hey guys, DarkDeath5000 here with another Wall Thunder video on PlayStation 4. This is an update to my previous control setup that I posted last year. I've made a few improvements and, and I've actually had a lot of you in the comments asking for me to do an updated controls video. Also with 1.77 being released recently I figured this was just a perfect time to do this, cover the changes and go through the new controls. So that's what I'll, I'll be covering in this video. So if we bring up the controls menu, so I'm using mouse aim, uh, which means I'm using the left stick to aim. So the left joystick is the mouse aim. Uh, weaponry, I've got this set to R2. So R2 is going to fire the machine guns and the cannons. So I've opened that up, um, got this set to the right trigger, just copy this down. Uh, unfortunately it doesn't cover the gun pods and things like that. So I've had to set this um, additional guns binding here to X. For what it's worth, if you're playing arcade, um, you can go ahead and set this to R2 as well so it fires everything at once. Um, but for the purpose of realistic it's actually it actually makes more sense to have this on a separate binding because you can conserve ammo better that way. So yeah, um, moving on. So drop bombs, that's just triangle. If you are flying a dedicated bomber, I recommend you set this one here as well, open bomb bay door. Uh, you could probably set this to something like square. Um, but for me personally, I, I don't really fly any bombers, so I've just left that as it is. Fire Rockets is on Circle, nothing much to say there really. Um, reload has been moved to the right stick pressed in plus left, so that's how I reload. Throttle Axis pretty much default here, it's just the right stick up and down. Um, the only thing I've really changed here is the dead zone, I've kicked this all the way up to 0 0.5 and the reason for this is I also have the roll on the right stick, left and right. So I don't want to be accidentally adjusting the throttle when I'm rolling. So I've just set the dead zone high here to help prevent that. Uh, like I said, the roll axis is also right stick, left and right. All you need to make sure here is that you've got the, the multiplier set to 1. Uh, pitch axis, so this is pretty much the main point of these controls. Just like in my previous video, it's set to L1 and R1, which is your max pitch. So pressing both L1 and R1, it's going to pitch the plane up. Um, there's no axis assigned, so that's pretty much all you need to assign the max value here. Same with the yaw axis, it's set to a max value of R1, so that's essentially going to yaw the plane right, and the min value is L1, which is going to yaw left again. No access assigned. So the flaps, um, I've just got these on down, so right button is going to um, lower the flaps. So I'll just keep pressing right, and that's going to lower it from raised takeoff to landing and then flaps up that's left so that's going to raise them again I also have um, the air brake on left but to be honest I don't really fly any planes with an air brake um, I mostly fly props so this is kind of a mostly a jet thing some attack planes do have them uh, the only trouble with it being on the same controls as the flaps is it can interfere uh, say you've got landing flaps out, so pressing air brake is going to raise and bring out the air brake. So that could be an issue. Um, if you do fly those kind of planes, it's probably going to make sense to set this to something else. Um, as with the bombs, as with the bombers even, you could probably set this to square for what it's worth. Toggle gear, again, that's just, that's just default, so that's up on the D-pad. Nothing much to say there. Uh, the guns are all default as well. Toggle view, so this is going to change from third person to virtual cockpit, cockpit and so on. 
Uh, I've got that set to the right sticking up. It's not really something I use much, so it doesn't really bother me having it there. Tracking camera, so this is the one that just looks at the target. So if you select somebody and then press this, so press the touchpad button, um, it's going to show you where they are, just bring the camera to them. Uh, and then aiming mode is essentially the replacement for L2. So by default, pressing L2 fully is going to move the cursor. So I've set this to square instead, so I can press square and it's going to move the cursor to where the enemy player is. Zoom axis, just like in the previous video, um, only I'm, I'm using this on L2 now. So it's L2 for the zoom now. Um, for those of you that are new to these controls, this is actually a progressive zoom. So what that means is uh, the harder you press it, the more it's going to zoom. And you can also lessen off um, on the trigger to kind of control the zoom so you can lessen the zoom. So you can actually control how much you zoom in with this. Um, viewing battle, again, for those that are new to these controls, I don't use the viewing battle, I use the mouse camera. So I hold the right stick in, and then I look around with the left stick. So that's what the mouse camera is. Um, I should also say it's much more, much more precise than these here. Uh, the issue with these two here is you have to hold D-pad down, and then you've got the right stick, um, and you have to kind of keep moving it. Just It's just awkward. Uh, the mouse camera is dead simple. You just press it, hold it, look around, and, and that's it. So easy. It's really precise. Um, this one here I've added. It's not really necessary. It's just your aer aerobatic smoke. So it's mostly something I use in custom battles, for instance. Um, but I've got that set to the right stick plus down. Uh, instructor here. Again, if, you, if you're new to the game or the controls, I recommend you set these to no. Uh, you just want to stop the instructor interfering as much as you can, really. Because it already handicaps your controls, so you don't want to have these on. Set them all to no. So the aiming axis, this is your, your mouse aim here. So I've got the X axis set to the left stick and left right. So left and right is your X axis. Um, the only thing you want to do here is set the non-linearity to 1. I think by default this is set to 2. But we're using acceleration so we don't really need any non-linearity. Same with the Y axis, only it's up and down. Left stick up down. Again, non-linearity of 1. And then the acceleration, I've got this set to 20%. Um, what this what this does is it kind of delays your aim, um, slows down if you will. So when you first touch the stick, it's going to be slow, nice and slow, so you can control it and aim. And the longer you hold it, it's going to accelerate and speed up. So it allows you to do the precise, slow movements, and the longer you hold it, you're going to get the faster uh, aiming, so you can pan around with the camera and whatnot. Aim acceleration, that's just acceleration delay that's just an, um, an extension to the aim acceleration above um, it just lets you control how much of a delay so how fast the acceleration kicks in or you can make it slower personally I just like this at the default 50% um, seems a nice nice percent to run with and then the gamepad camera control sensitivity this is actually your overall sensitivity so I've got this set to 75% now that might be a bit high for some of you, um, if that's the case try up around 30%. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than 30% because it'll just be too slow and I really wouldn't go any higher than 75% there's not much point. 75% is plenty fa plenty fast enough and you can aim as well. So I think personally 75% is the sweet spot for me. Um, tank controls, as in my previous videos, I'm just going to skip over this. I don't really play tanks. 
at all, so I certainly don't have the experience to advise what controls you run there, so I'll just leave that up to you guys. So moving on to common controls for the map, I've got this set to right stick plus to right on the d-pad. Um, the scoreboard I've just moved to down on the d-pad because it's something I access a lot. Um, I use it to check who's alive in the game, so I can kind of decide how many players I'm potentially fighting. Um, so that's why I've got that there. Leave the vehicle, so this is essentially an eject. It's uh, not very often I use it, but it is kind of handy, so I've got that to right stick plus left, so you just hold that down for three seconds and then you're going to eject from the plane. Um, show the status of the vehicle modules. Again, this is something I've added. Um, so I hold left and it's going to show any damage I've taken. Um, I kind of use it to judge whether or not I need to return to base. So if my engine's been hit, it might only be minor damage. So yellow is usually minor and doesn't really do much. Um, red and black is when you need to worry. Because then you need to head back to base and repair as soon as you can. Otherwise you're going to be out of the game. Uh, what's happening in here? Okay, that was odd. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really handy to have because you can just judge what kind of damage you've taken and whether or not you need to return to base. Um, lock targets, I've just moved to the left stick pressed in. Uh, it kind of made sense because I used the left stick to aim. And I can then just lock the target by pressing it in as well. So that's just making the controls simpler. Um, this one here, chat, um, I use a keyboard for typing in the chat. So I've got this set to return, so I just press the return key and then I can start typing. Um, if you haven't got a keyboard, I highly recommend it because it just lets you engage in the chat. Um, and it's a lot better to talk to the team, work together. So menu, I've moved this to the right stick plus options. Uh, just because it's something I don't really use in game. So it made sense to free up the options button for a better binding. I'm actually using it for um, the quick quick chat commands, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, zoom camera, like I said earlier, we're using the zoom axis, the progressive zoom, so we don't need this one here. That's why it's left blank. Uh, unfortunately, this one will give a warning, so you just have to live with it. And then, again, like I said earlier, I'm using mouse look for the camera so I activate this with the right stick pressed in so I'll hold the right stick and look around with the left stick aim sensitivity this one is actually the touchpad on the controller um, which to be honest is totally useless I don't use it at all other than here now um, but in game it's something you don't really use so you want to set this to the lowest sensitivity you can, which is 5%, and this will help avoid any accidental swipes in the game. Uh, camera mouse look speed should be default, I believe. If not, you can set these to, to what I've got if you like. And then, like I said, um, I've got the radio messages for the team set to options, just because it's a better place to put it. Uh, well, actually, rather, it's not a better place, but... Um, I've got the target select on the left stick now, which is something I use a lot more often than the radio messages. Uh, for what it's worth as well, you could kind of play with those two. You could have start um, options for the target select and you could leave the radio messages on the left stick. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I might actually play with that myself now. Just something I've thought of. So that should pretty much be it. Um, hopefully I've covered everything there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, otherwise, if you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I hope this video helps, and thanks for watching.